don't think you're supposed to be able to see daylight through a heat exchanger tube. It just doesn't seem right. Must be a carrier, right? Typical spot, right at the seams. Okay, we don't get this a whole lot in California, but it's heat exchanger day today. We're gonna be changing this little guy, just a tiny little itty bitty thing. It's got a nice good crack right there. Typical spot on the carriers, right on the welds. So, we'll be replacing that guy. Like I said, it's just a tiny little one. Just taking all the panels off. Shouldn't be a hard thing at all. Nice, easy, quick one. So, this heat exchanger is obviously trashed. And I've had this happen before and I can't believe I forgot this again. Carrier, they really should, but they don't send these baffles this one too they have different names for them but they don't send them and they don't come on the new heat exchanger so luckily my supplier had them and I had to go back and get them but these guys right here and then also you want to make sure when you're doing these heat exchangers uh, these are important so you want to make sure you put these on but you also want to make sure you get new gasket material make sure that you have it this heat exchanger came with it sometimes you got to ask for it so you always want to ask I think the easiest thing when you're doing these heat exchangers is to ask them for a parts breakdown and then you investigate yourself what parts you need for this job. That's the easiest way. Because I tried to explain these baffles to the guy on the phone and then I just asked him, just send me a breakdown and then I picked what I wanted and you know, then found it much easier that way. So we got this right here. I got my, uh, they got different names for these but I call them baffles but I got these both put on. Okay, this one's really important. Got the gaskets behind them where they're supposed to be. That's the old one. So we're just gonna keep assembling. So I didn't like the gas line the way that it was running, so we're gonna correct that. Um, also the insulation, I couldn't source this, this heat resistant insulation anywhere. So just got some sheet metal. That way it's not rubbing up against the heat exchanger anymore. So we're just getting ready to kind of set the heat exchanger down. Um, yeah, so we're just moving along. I did not have this black rubber material that they were using to seal, so we've got some uh, high temperature silicone to seal this area, and then I also used it to seal where there was black rubber tape behind the heat exchanger surface right here. I used high temp silicone back there too, so that way we're sealed off. And I made sure that that high temp silicone, uh, you can see that's also what the manufacturer used, because this is from the manufacturer right there. So um, I made sure though it's not dripping down on the heat exchanger. I don't want it to burn but this is from the manufacturer too that's not me but my stuff's down below see where it's mushing up down there so anyways it's moving along everything's back together I'm just waiting for another fitting we redid the gas line we're gonna put a proper sediment trap right there so uh, before we're done we'll get in here uh, we put this uh, cover panel right here so that way we can fire up the heater and burn off all the oil and then uh, I think I mentioned it already, but we cleaned the blower assembly out and then we got down in here and cleaned the drain pan, this backside that you can't get to. We cleaned that out too. Yeah, and that's it. So we're just waiting for the other T and then we'll finish this up. Okay, we are running. Gas pressure's a little bit low so we can go up a little bit. 3.5. it operate for a bit smoking out pretty good right now so it's kind of hard to see on camera but there's quite a bit of smoke rolling out of there so we're looking good so far just gonna let it run for a while we're not gonna leave we're gonna test operations everything clean up our messes we got quite a mess going on up here right now okay so this was a uh, a return visit to replace a heat exchanger on a small little five ton package unit um, it was nothing too crazy, but it's just one of those things you have to follow uh, the procedures step by step 
you know, you pay attention to how you took it apart, push it right back in. These things really don't take much time at all. You can get these done in a couple hours. Um, I lucked out because I was able to have a second person help helping me to bring stuff up and, you know, take stuff down. And then also he was able to work while I had to go pick up the extra parts that I needed and different things. Uh, I also gave a tip about, you know, getting a parts breakdown. It's very good that you do that. Uh, and I can't believe I forgot to do that on this one again, because there's always parts that uh, they don't send you that you need to be able to visualize and say, oh, I need all that too. So anyways, did all that, tested the operations. The, uh, the couple things I didn't show in this video um, was number one, I supported that gas line. If you saw how, when I, when I fixed it, it was now at a right angle. I was worried about someone stepping on that and breaking the gas line. So I did go back in there with a four by four and properly support it. And then also, um, I did, uh, ensure that the unit had the proper airflow. Um, we don't know what caused the heat exchanger to go bad. Uh, I went ahead and changed the gas valve, the igniter and the electrode at the same time. I put new limit switches on it. Um, and then also replace the ignition module or the, the circuit board for the machine. But at the same time, before I changed the heat exchanger, uh, I went downstairs and found that the return was pretty dirty. So it wasn't getting very good airflow coming back up to the unit. So I cleaned that and then also tested the airflow to make sure that we had proper airflow going through the unit now. Okay. It's very important that you always do that because heat exchangers don't typically just fail. It's usually something going on, whether it be poor airflow improperly set gas valve, different stuff like that. Okay. So, um, for whatever reason, I didn't get video of those things, but it's important to know that, uh, you need to check that stuff. Okay. Other than that, um, there was nothing too crazy about this one. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch my videos. Um, please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. And also popping up right now is some other channels that I highly recommend you guys check out. Uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Okay.